This is a mid-2010 MacBook Pro, and I bought this brand new in 2010. It's when I just moved to Japan and I got my first paycheck as a translator, and I spent it on something which I'd wanted for a while. I'd been Windows all up until that point, but I loved it, and I still love it, and it still works. The battery's not great. I think the screen just went off then. But what I, I do use this for is to download things and then transfer them onto my current laptop. It's got 250 gigabytes on the hard drive and four gig of RAM. Another cool thing about it, maybe you can see there, is the, the Japanese kana on the keys, which is good when you're learning Japanese. So this has been one of the best possessions I've ever owned and invested in. Like I say, it's still working 13 years later. Now this is a 2020 M1 MacBook Pro, which I bought in 2021, two years ago. Again, it's got 250 gigabytes on the hard drive and eight gigabytes of RAM, and I bought it for uh, £1,168, I think it was, in the UK. So I've, I've had this for two years, but I am now deciding to switch over to a Windows PC for the first time in 13 years. Now, I think a lot of the problems that I'm going to go through in this video, a lot of them are related to the process of an M1 which was introduced fairly recently, and I think still a lot of software still isn't written for the M1 as default. And that has caused, I think, a lot of the problems which I'm going to talk about. A lot of these points are related to the fact that I made a career change earlier this year. I got employed as a web developer, and a lot of these reasons are related to that, but not all of them. Some days I don't want to go into the office or I'm not feeling great, and work allow me to work remotely from home, which is great. And basically, when I tried to connect to the Office VPN using the MacBook, it just didn't work. You know, the first day I was working from home, I was just sat there. I just wanted to get on and do my work. But a couple of the other devs at work tried to help me through it. You know, I shared my screen and we basically realized that it's a known issue with Ventura. The VPN on Ventura MacBooks just doesn't work for some reason or in some cases right now. In the end, we got around that by not using the Mac's native features. I had to download another program, OpenVPN, and we got it to work that way. But it's a pretty fundamental thing that should be working, and it was really disappointing and a little embarrassing for me. Now, point number two is that in my spare time on the weekends, I wanted to teach myself some SQL, some SQL language type stuff. I'd never really done it before, and we use it now and then at work. And this is perhaps something that's familiar to a lot of Mac users. Sometimes when you want to just install something, uh, some new software or whatever, it just doesn't work. And you really have to go around the houses to get it to work. Now at work, we use .NET, we use Microsoft, we use SQL Server for the database stuff. So I wanted to learn some SQL Server stuff. SQL Server is not supported on the M1 chip in my MacBook on the ARM architecture. So I had to go down the route of using Azure SQL Edge, which is a similar database type, but it's not the same. And then I had to use Azure Data Studio. I was able to learn a decent amount, but it took me a lot longer because I had to spend hours installing the right things. At work, we use SQL Server Management Studio and SQL Server, and I wasn't able to use the things that we use at work. So that was reason number two for me. Now, reason number three is perhaps the biggest one. In my job, I use a Windows PC. Like I say, we use .NET and we use Visual Studio every day. It's our main piece of software that we use to code. There has been a version of Visual Studio for Mac. I think it's called Visual Studio for Mac. And I downloaded that and I was looking forward to getting going and like I say, working from home or doing some bits in my spare time. And I quickly realized that this program was just a piece of crap. The UI, the user interface, doesn't look anywhere near the same as the Microsoft version. It just feels like there are less functions in general, and it's really buggy, and things just plain don't work a lot of the time. It just felt completely broken to the point that I really wasn't enjoying doing work, and I felt like it was genuinely hindering me, because there were certain things that I couldn't do, or it was just plain slow. And it's pretty funny actually, because I think just a few weeks ago, Microsoft announced that they're discontinuing Visual Studio for Mac. I think even they realized after all these years that it's just not working and it's just not worth it. Plenty of people 
online say the same thing. And yeah, that's definitely the conclusion I've come to. Now, a lot of people have already said this to me. They've said, try Visual Studio Code, which works on a Mac fine. And yet yeah, I have used it in the past and it's been great for certain things, just HTML, CSS, JavaScript. When I came to using it for C Sharp, you know, I downloaded, I think it's the C Sharp dev kit or this, all the C Sharp extens extensions for Visual Studio Code. And I, again, I don't know if it's the M1 chip or what, but it just wasn't working. Like I wasn't getting IntelliSense, which is like the predictive, strongly typed type thing that tells you whether you've got any errors in your code. And as you can imagine, if I can't see that I've got any errors or I've typed something wrong, then again, I'm really fighting a losing battle. I'm not the only person having this issue with Visual Studio Code and the C-sharp extensions. It's kind of a known issue, but yeah, it just didn't work for me. So I was basically just sat at home <laughs> trying to get working, trying to get going, and I just felt like I was handicapped. And every, everyone else at work, you know, at home, they'll use Windows. I felt like I was really being left behind. So these are kind of the main reasons, but let's get into some more reasons why I want to switch. Now the 2020 MacBook Pro that I bought, as you can see, I've got this silly dongle thing adapter hanging off the side, and you can probably see that there's only USB-C ports there. Now, when I bought this at the time, I was like, oh, maybe I'll be able to get by, I'll buy an adapter. But over the two years, it's just become really annoying kind of to have that dangling off the side the whole time. I just wish there were more ports on the side. And to be honest, they've probably even fixed it by now. But with this one, that just really annoyed me. Like one that you have to buy something extra just to get USB or SD working or HDMI, um, you know, most other laptops have these things. And then another not great experience that I had with another Apple product was that, uh, again, around two years ago, I wanted a new phone and I thought, let's go for the iPhone. I've owned one before. It was the iPhone 13 that was the current one at the time. I was kind of excited to, to get a brand new phone, actually. I was like, this will be great and it'll go with my Mac. And I got it home and I started taking some photos and this is another known issue, or it was at the time, I don't know how it is now, but basically there was this thing on it, I think it was called Smart HDR that you couldn't turn off and it was making all my images look really overexposed, oversaturated and really sharp in a way that just didn't look good, especially when I took pictures of myself or other people they didn't look like the person. Um, it almost put this kind of orange fake tan thing over everyone. And I wanted to turn it off, but I genuinely couldn't. I found that really frustrating and just disappointing. And it's like, yeah, I get some people might want such a feature, but if you don't, you should be able to turn it off. And yeah, I just traded it in for a Google Pixel 6. And honestly, I've never looked back, I would say, that is the best phone I've ever owned. And obviously it's not an Apple product. So I, I started to move over at that point, I think. Because point six, then you get into compatibility issues. Like another reason I haven't enjoyed my Mac is that it's really difficult to transfer files from the Android onto the Mac. It's just really buggy and glitchy. I have something called the Android File Transfer app, which I think yeah, it's, made, it's made by Android, you know, for Macs specifically. But it just doesn't work all the time. Honestly, sometimes you'll have to spend 10 to 15 minutes plugging, unplugging, shutting down your machine, shutting down your phone, just to get it to work to transfer a file from your phone onto your laptop. You know, I've used my Pixel 6 for filming videos, and so I'm transferring huge files sometimes. It's just really frustrating. Now, point number seven is related to AI art. I had a play around with Mid Journey. I really enjoyed it. And then I thought, why not try Stable Diffusion, which everyone is talking about. I was really into all this AI art stuff at that time. As you would expect, perhaps, it was an absolute effort to get Stable Diffusion to, to work on a Mac in the first place. I really had to go around the houses to install it and get it working. And then when it did work, it was just 
so slow to the point that it was unusable. Again, I think this at the time was a bit of a known issue with the M1 chip on Max, but yeah, it was taking honestly 15 to 20 minutes to create four images. So you're just gonna end up not using it. I tried everything I could find online to optimize it for my Mac, didn't get anywhere. You know, I'm quite a tech savvy person. And yeah, I was just so frustrated that I just uninstalled the whole thing. I think with a lot of these issues, I could accept it if it was some real edge case or obscure piece of software which, which I was trying to run. But a lot of these things are used by millions of people on their windows. And it's just hard when you've got a Mac and you're like, I can't do that. As I said, I think a lot of this is down to the M1. I think a lot of this is down to Ventura. There seem to be a few problems with that and I'm hoping things will change. But finally, my last point is that Apple stuff, as we all know, is expensive. And I will say that often the price is justified. As I said, I'm still using this 13 years down the line. It's one of the best items I've ever owned. And I didn't have too many problems with it. It was more, it was more recently with the more recent stuff in the M1 chip. But the thing with things being so expensive is that sometimes when you've invested so much money in something and then you want to upgrade, you know, a, a few years down the line, sometimes you haven't got the money or you don't want to because you made such a spend in the first place. Whereas I feel like with Windows stuff, you can perhaps upgrade and keep with the times a bit more because things are just genuinely cheaper. Yeah, I agree, they might not be quite as good as the Apple product, but it means if you do need to upgrade, it is a lot easier because it's cheaper. Now I'm using this right now to help record this video. I've got my mic plugged into it, but this is a Lenovo IdeaPad Pro 5. I bought this very recently, a few weeks ago for 616 pounds. It's got a 512 gigabyte hard drive. It's got a 5.1 gigahertz AMD Ryzen processor and 32 gigabytes of RAM. So two years since my last purchase, I've bought a laptop with double the amount of RAM for half the price. I know specs aren't everything. There's an argument to be made that um, a Mac with a lesser spec is better than a Windows laptop with a, with a better spec. But these are things to consider. I just think the higher price point of Apple stuff and Macs mean that sometimes you're locked in and it's more difficult to move away or change from it if you need to at some point, like I did. I'm not saying Windows PCs are better, but they are definitely more suitable for me and where I'm at right now. I can work from home. I can connect to the VPN. I can use Visual Studio. I can do my work without feeling like I'm handicapped in some way. It's been a really nice 13 year relationship that I've had with Apple and Mac, but yeah, for now, it's time for a change.